Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. Today I want to talk about something uh, very simple and that is meditation. Meditation. Because it is, um, it is a, a protocol of submission. Part of the protocol of submission to God. See, we humans are a fallen race. In the beginning, Adam fell away from a relationship with God. He had a relationship with God. He walked with God. But he turned his back upon God when he wanted to try it on his own. But when he turned his back upon God, he needed it was required that there be some alternative to which to move toward, listen to, have a relationship with. You see what I mean? And so it, it, a new relationship developed, a relationship with a wrong relationship with words. Remember, it was through words that he was seduced. A wrong relationship with everything. And then a relationship, a wrong relationship with the un, that which seduced him away, that spiritual dimension that seduced him away from a right relationship with God. You see what I mean? So now it doesn't matter what you get involved with. Whatever it is that promises you greatness or happiness or a false promises to make you feel good when you don't deserve to feel good, that promises you whatever. You get involved with it. And in your involvement, you, you change. And eventually, you become a creature that is only of that. See, life is very decisive. You, e you either have a right relationship with God, or you don't. And if you don't, you have a relationship with something else, you see. And so what happened was that having fallen away from God, the only solution, the only way back, the only remedy for all of the problems that we have and all of the issues and all the heartaches and the arguing and the wars and the sickness and the everything that goes wrong. The only remedy is to be restored to a right relationship with God because that's what we were created for. A right relationship with him. Anything else is just another wrong. So how do you get back to a right relationship with God? Well, let's say that you had betrayed your country. Let's say you had betrayed your country. Let's say your country had a king back in the days of Robin Hood. King, the king, the good king, King Arthur or some good king. So you betrayed your country and you betrayed him. and You went over to the enemy. But then you wanted to come back. Well, you couldn't just come back and laugh and say, ha, 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 everything's okay. You couldn't just walk into the king's chamber and say, hey, how's it going? No, you would have to have a change of heart and then petition and hope that he would grant you the ability to come back. That's all you could do nothing else. And then if if you had an opportunity to approach, then it would have to be, you would be, you would have to eat humble pie. And you would have to come in with hat in hand and admit you're wrong and ask for another chance. And you would have to wait until he was willing to see you, the king. You couldn't just barge into his office or into his court 
you would have to wait and hope that he would see you. And then when he would, if he would see you, then you would have to be there at that. You see what I mean? So coming back to God has, um, it, there's a, a certain formality to it. It's informal. It's not rigid and, and uh, letter of the law like so many things are, but there's a certain formality to it. First of all, you have to see, you have to be willing to admit you're wrong for having defected from him in the first place. See, all the things that you do now, your anger, your rushing around, your impatience, your excitement, the way you move after things excitedly, worriedly, nervously, hurriedly, see, none of that is going to work because it's the wrong thing, see. And everything else that you're doing, self-serving and, and justification and rationalizing and trying to pre save face are not going to work. And emotions are not going to work. See, that's part of the problem. Emotions is reacting and responding to something else other than your creator. So all the things that you've done in the past, all of your huffing and puffing and your, your goal setting and your trying to make things happen and your excitement and your anger and all of your motivations externally inspired, none of them are going to work because they're wrong. Only right is compatible with what's right. So how do you make yourself right? Well, you can't make yourself right. So now what are you going to do? Now that's the conundrum. It seems like it seems like a, an impossible conundrum to solve. But it's not. Why? Because first of all, two things. First of all, God's grace. His forgiveness, his uh, benevolence. Secondly, Christ. What Christ did and what he, he is. See? And then, also, you have, um, you can have a change of heart, a change of attitude. You can't make yourself right, but you can see you're wrong and regret what you see about yourself. See? And not try to justify it or defend it. No, a change of attitude. And then what, what you've always done is rush excitedly, hurriedly, worriedly, ambitiously, angrily, resentfully. See, now instead you become still. You cease and desist from all your efforts to save yourself. You realize that you can't ambitiously, you can't, the path to God is not an ambitious one. So you can't study your way to God. See, words is the, is the other problem. Words are not, see, it's the wrong use of words. It's the spoken word that separated was, was the vehicle by which, one of the vehicles by which Adam was separated from God. He listened to the spoken word and he ignored the wordless word in his heart. He listened to the spoken word, to words. And words conjured up images and pictures and, and notions of being great through knowledge, see? But there, it, there's nothing there. They're just words. But he developed a relationship with those ideas, those notions, those imaginings, and the emotions that accompany them, see? And isn't that what you do now? Don't you delve into your imagination, see, and, and sit there daydreaming about how great, what you want to be and how great you can be and daydreaming about romance and daydreaming about revenge and daydreaming about trying to change the past and rearrange the past and try, see? And when, when you think you really can't make anything better with all your planning and scheming, then you sit there and worry. 
See? But you develop a relationship with these false constructs of the mind. See? Now, language has a certain value to communicate truth in a simple, straightforward way, not a guileful way. To point the way to... See, a language can point the way, and then when you... When you see, oh, I get it, then you can let go of the words. You don't need them anymore. But when you misuse language to escape from mean, true meaning, to escape from truth, to make your own truth, so that's not going to work. So you can't, you can't come up with some words that are going to help you find God. You see what I mean? And study, well, that's an ambitious thing again, trying to make something of yourself. Not, see, not that you want to be, you know, a bum on Skid Row? No, of course not. But the bums on Skid Row, if you go and see the bums on Skid Row, you'll find out that many of them became that way as in rebellion against the pressures. People pressured them, see, to succeed, to do well, to, to get better grades, to please the teacher, to please the coach, to please the parent. And they rebelled against the hideous pressure. And that's the result, see of those words and that study and that pressure and that motivation, that kind of motivation. So, see, if none of those things will work, then you have a change of heart, a humble attitude, you become still. Instead of rushing, you become still. Instead of looking to imagining, imaginings and ideas for answers and to experts for answers and to the external people that cleverly promise you, as was promised in the Garden of Eden, you don't look to any of those. So now there you are. You're just, a, now you're a nothing. A big nothing. You thought you were something. Now you find out you're just a nothing. So there you are, just a nothing. But from this nothing, see, not now you're not doing anything wrong. See, being, see, going the right way is more more than anything else is not going the wrong way. It's that simple. So when you're not being ambitious, you're not trying to study your way to God, you're not trying to save yourself, you're not trying to make things right, you're not trying to save your, save your pride, you're not trying to meddle and change things, you're not trying to put on a show for God or for anybody. You just sit there, regret what you see about yourself, but realize you can't change yourself. And you become still, and now you're still. Now, God can take this clay. He's the potter, and you're the clay. And now he can make something of you. Or restore you to, to a right path that you would have been on from the very beginning. See, if, when you were a little child, if you hadn't been emotionalized, if, you ha if someone hadn't pulled on your heartstrings, or if someone hadn't teased you, and made you angry, and then made you want to get even, or any of that stuff, if none of that had ever happened, and you had just quietly done the next thing that came, and you would have discovered as a child many things, and you would have become an Einstein, <laughs> or a David, or a Paul. But you were deflected. Well, now all of your deflection has led you far away and changed you. Now you have temporarily become a nothing. Now God will set things right and start you moving in the right direction again. It's a bit very simple. And part of that protocol, remember we talked about protocol. So now I've, I've said, humble, still, willing to admit you're wrong. See, seeing that you can't change yourself. Now, and Christ and God's grace. Now there's a little something that you can do. A very little thing that you can do. And it's to do the little proper meditation. Because it's a pro it's it's, it's becoming still. It's sitting down, becoming still with the intent of being still. 
then you sit there still and observe your thoughts instead of being lost in thoughts, instead of going with the thoughts like you used to, right? They would pull you away because you became subject to them. See, that's all part of what you became. Remember, if you defect from God, then you become subject to everything else. You become subject to words, to thoughts, to notions, to emotions, to other people, to doubt. You become subject to all of that. But now, you stand back and you just watch all of that. So now instead of being subject to it, you just see it. You just watch it. You gaze at it. You stare at it. You stand back mentally. That's the meditation. See? And then you extend that, what you glean from the, the meditation, you glean something from, from God. He gives you something, some light, some thought to be, something to, that you will move toward. You just start moving toward it. You won't even know why. You just do. He gives that to you. He gives you time, time, so that you might recover. See? And he, he gives you all of that and more, mysteriously. When you become still, and then you receive that very humbly. See? And that's the meditation. And you extend it to your body. You extend the light in which you now stand to your body. And so now you become a light flooded being in God's light, observing the wrong, but no longer a part of it, no longer trying to change it, no longer trying to hide it, no longer doing anything, just seeing it. And that's the beginning of salvation, the protocol of salvation, and the protocol of returning to a right relationship with God. So that's it.